Yeah, welcome to this channel. We continue with our review of business data analytics, the August 2025 setting. And today we are doing the last question in this paper. That is question number 25. The others we have already reviewed. If you are new to this channel, kindly visit the other questions uh, so that you can be able to go through them. I'll read through question number 25. This was dealing with employment income and uh, specialization area of taxation. Uh, and the question reads, uh, Kriswa Mai was employed by Chema Limited as an accountant with effect from 1st January 2024. He reported the following for the year ended at 1st December 2024. Basic salary was 200000 per month. The employer paid his annual life insurance premium at an amount of 80000 he earned a net interest income of 120 during the year from his housing investment development bond. The employer provided him with a house whose market rent of value was 120,000 per month. The employer deducted 15% of his basic salary per month as nominal rent. Education fee for two children uh, amounting to 600 were paid by the employer during the year. This amount was charged in the employer's profit or loss statement. The employer reimbursed him for all out-of-pocket expenses incurred on the official use of his personal car. In the year 2024, the amount reimbursed amounted to 30000 He had purchased the car in the year 2023 at a cost of 2.2. The car had an engine capacity of 1.6. He contributed 28000 per month to a registered pension scheme. The employer contributed 28 per month for him to the same scheme. He received an entertainment allowance amounting to 100000 during the year. He received a year and bonus payable to all the staff of 150,000. The employer provided him with electricity, water, telephone, and cook at a cost of 10, 5, 60, and 20,000 per month, respectively. He received medical benefit amounting to 530 from the employer. The company has a medical scheme for all the staff. So compute um, the tax payable for Chris or Mai for the year ended at 1st December 2024. So this is Chris. So Chris or Mai. Is or my uh, taxable income total taxable total taxable income total taxable income for the year ended uh, that first December first of December twenty twenty four that first of December twenty twenty four that way. I'll bold that and bold this. So shall start with employment income. Employment income. Employment income. And under employment income, we start with the basic. Basic salary. Basic salary. And he was receiving a basic salary of 200,000 per month. 200,000 per month. So 200 by 12. 200,000 by 12 because you're dealing with the annual per annum and you'll find that it will be 2.4 for the whole year 2.4 the employer paid his life annual life insurance premium amounting to 80 so you're supposed to pay for yourself huh? so life insurance when the employer pays it is a benefit chargeable to tax life insurance of 80 80,000 then here net interest income so we shall come back to that uh, for the income these are the income of which you'll find that from housing investment we shall analyze that the employer provided him with a house whose market rental value we shall again deal with that the house benefit we have education school fees of 600 uh, the amount was charged to the employer profit or loss if it was charged to the employer it means the employee is the one that will pay the tax yeah it was treated as allowable so the employee is the one that will pay the tax for this school fees. So school fees. So school fees of 600,000. 600,000 is our school fees. Then the employer reimbursed. So these are reimbursement of official duties eh, or official expenses which are not taxable. Remember he owned the car. So the amount that he used out of pocket expenses for the official car that is what was reimbursed uh, and because it was for official use then it was not taxable so the car we shall not account for it the car benefit because the car belonged to the employee not the employer so the car was for the employee 
not the employer. So he, this was a personal car. So we shall not calculate the car benefit because the only thing that was done was reimbursement. Eh? The amount that he used, he was refunded. He contributed 28 per month to a registered pension scheme and the employer contributed 28. So when you look at the contribution in this note, eh? he contributed 28,000 per month to a registered pension scheme. The employer contributed 28,000 eh? per month for him to the same scheme. So for the contribution to pension, especially for the employer, it is pegged at a maximum of 240, yeah, to 40,000. Up to 40,000, the amount is not taxable, but anything above that, it will be taxable. And when you talk about 40,000 per annum, that is 20,000 per month. But remember, there was an amendment huh, which will not affect this amendment for 2024, which was uh, effectively taking effect on, I think, 27th of December, whereby the band was expanded from 240 now to 360. Yeah, the set limit now is 360. Up to 30,000 per month will not be taxed. Huh? Up to 30,000 will not be taxed. Anything above that will be taxable. But that one now will be applicable for 2025. Huh? And we shall be looking at the employment income for 2025 because the effective was 27th of December 2024. So here we are still using the previous uh, for 240,000, 20,000 per month. Therefore, here we shall have employer contribution. Employer contribution to pension. Employer contribution to pension. To pension. You are taking the amount above the set limit. Eh? The amount above the set limit. Or we can say it was contributing 28 minus 20,000 per month. Eh? And you multiply by 12. Or 28 by 12, you minus 240 per annum. Eh? It will still be okay. So 96 will be what will be taxed eh, for the employer. He received an entertainment allowance of 100,000. We have entertainment allowance, entertainment allowance of 100,000. So they have not included whether it was for private or there is part of the entertainment that was entertaining the customers. So we just take the whole as for private. Then he received year-end bonus payable to all staff. So we have bonus. So bonus of 150,000 will be taxable. The employer provided him with electricity. We have electricity, electricity, and remember electricity, we have water, and we have telephone, telephone, electricity, water, and telephone. So electricity, 10,000, all these were per month, huh? yeah, all these were per month, per month. So electricity, it was 10,000 per month. So you multiply by 12, which will be 120,000. Huh? Then when it comes to water, it's 5,000. 5,000 by 12, which will be 60,000. Remember in the event that you're given per annum, we normally look at the commissioner. For electricity, it's normally 18, and for water, it's 6,000, whichever is normally higher, but already these are higher. Telephone, it was 60,000. 60,000. We take 30% uh, of the bill, uh, 60,000 by 12 and you multiply by 30 percent 30 percent is believed to be the benefit because uh, the others it is assumed you are using it for official then the, that will be for private uh, 30 then we had uh, cook cook was being paid the cook was being paid 20,000 per month by 12 20,000 per month by 12 that way so he received a medical benefit amounting to 530 from the employer. The company has a medical scheme for all the staff. So this is non-discriminatory because we had a medical scheme for all. If it is non-discriminatory, it is not taxable. But whereas it is discriminatory, it is taxable. When it covers only few employees, it will be taxable. But when it is covering all the employ employees, then it is not taxable. In this case, it is covering all, it is not taxable. So this will be our employment income. Our employment income. Employment income, employment, employment income. So we get the total here. We just use the top border. Then we have a uh, house benefit now. House benefit. And for the house benefit, uh, we take 15% of these. A uh, uh, house benefit is a higher. We'll take the higher, the higher of. 
uh, 15 percent of employment income employment employment 15 percent of employment income i'll take this by 15 percent 15 percent of employment income i compare with the market rent market rent and in our case you had been told in note number four the employer provided him with a house whose market rental value was 120,000 per month 120,000 per month by 12 which will be 1440 which will be 1440 that way so whichever is higher of which 1440 is higher we less less nominal 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 rent so from the higher i'll bold this to be my higher so nominal rent nominal is what was being deducted the employer deducted 15 percent of his uh, basic salary per month as nominal rent so 15 percent will be the same as this uh-huh uh so 15 no 15 percent of his basic uh, so it's for the basic basic was this uh, 15 percent is what was being deducted as nominal 15 percent so this is what we shall deduct and therefore we are taking the market which is higher minus the nominal rent so the house benefit will be that and we get the pensionable pay pensionable pensionable pay here we shall add the two this plus this that way and then uh, we less allowable allowable deduction allowable deductions and here we have contribution to pension contribution contribution to pension and our actual our actual contribution remember here we take the lesser actual contribution it was contributing 28 28,000 by 12 here yeah. He contributed 20,000 per month to a registered pension, and we have what we call the set limit. Set limit, which is 240. 240,000. And remember, you said 240 was up to December. It was amended to be now 360, which will not affect this questionnaire. Huh? Yeah, that way. So 240. So we take the lesser, and the lesser is 240. The lesser is 240 and you get the net employment net employment income employment income net employment income here we less this so these are net employment income so when you look at other income because you're done to net employment other income that we had was only one uh, in note number three where he earned a net interest income of 120 during the year from his housing development bond uh, when you look at the interest we normally have three types of interest income which is either qualifying non-qualifying or exempt so interest that we receive from housing development bond is normally qualifying uh, the first 300,000 is qualifying at the rate of 10 percent the first 300,000 is a qualifying at the rate of 10 percent the rest is non-qualifying so in our case on 20,000 lies within the first 300,000 what it means when you talk about qualifying the withholding tax at the rate of 10 percent becomes final with the holding tax at the rate of 10 percent becomes final and therefore these uh, uh, because it was already net the tax that was deducted at 10 percent that was the final tax and no any further tax will be subjected this income will not be subjected to any other tax and that will be all for that so it will be uh qualifying and therefore with the holding will be final with the holding will be final and that means that will be all you don't have any other any other other income here other income so here other income other incomes so you don't have any other the income is zero so you get the total taxable total taxable income total taxable income total taxable income so it will be the two this plus this that we don't have so it will be the total taxable income in our case this is what will be taxed as our total taxable 
income, total taxable income. And our tax, because compute the tax payable. Yeah, tax payable. Tax payable. Tax payable. Using the graduated scale. Remember the graduated scale starts from 1 to 288. Eh? Yeah, so the first 288. Eh? So the first 288,000. 288,000. So this one becomes 288 by 10. Normally at 10%. Normally at 10%. The first 288 at 10%. And then... We deal with the tax payable and we know for the tax payable the first rate eight, eight, eh? the first rate eight, eight using the graduated scale the first rate eight, eight thousand so it will be two eight eight and you multiply by ten percent multiplied by ten percent we'll put an equal sign here that way and you multiply by ten percent then the next hundred, next hundred thousand, here it will be hundred thousand by twenty five percent, which will be that. Then the shall have the next, the next. So in this case, it is up to six million. So we take the actual here. Our actual this one minus three eight eight three eight eight and you multiply by thirty percent multiply by thirty percent and you get the gross tax gross tax and our gross tax here this will be our gross tax. Then we let's set off. Set offs. So we don't have pay in our question. Huh? So start with personal relief. Personal relief. Personal relief. And personal is 28,800, which and every employee qualifies for a personal relief. Personal, personal relief. And we had insurance. Insurance. Insurance relief. So for the insurance relief, we take the lesser of the premium, 15% of the premium, 10% of the premium amount. And our premium amount was 80, 15% of it. And the set limit, which is normally 60,000 per annum. Set limit of 60,000 per annum. So the lesser one will be 12,000 that way and we get our net we get our net tax net tax payable net tax payable here shall minus the two that way so this will be our net in this case and that is how that question was supposed to be, how that question was supposed to be done, how that question was supposed to be done. And it's a question that a student could have taken less than 20, less than 20 minutes to get your marks. Remember, in taxation, you don't use all the information. The only thing you need to understand how the information relates to the question and the treatment of that particular information. So remember, our September intake is uh, ongoing. Yeah, you can enroll with us using the numbers or the whatsapp in the description and if you're yet to subscribe to this channel kindly do that support us by clicking the subscription button it will go a very long way yeah in assisting the production of these uh, videos uh, and also reaching other students who are yet to be reached so thank you